Get ready for another fascinating tour on the Linking Your Thinking channel, where I'm pleased to introduce the thinking of Sana A. Ahmed. Sana's presentation made us all lean forward as we admired her intentional use of colors, fonts, and as you'll see, emojis. In the following, Sana gives us a captivating capstone tour into how she looks at and manages the experience of working with ideas. You'll see how she created the brain forest, and you'll hear about the intention behind it all. You'll also see how she thinks about films like Richard Linklater's Way in life. Let's view Sana's presentation now. Hi everyone, my name is Sana and I'm going to share my capstone project for the light workshop I completed in the winter of 2020. One thing to note is that I call my PKM system within Obsidian the brain forest and I'll tell you more about that a little later. I want to start off with showing you my Obsidian. The graph feature is what really drew me in. I'm able to see the visual hierarchy and relationships of notes and projects in a very fun and useful way just by customizing it. Also, I was able to make a very serious dent in a very dense course that I'm taking, um, and you can see that over here. I was also able to do the research design behind a white paper that I'm creating, and you can see that over here in this yellow sunburst. I've added more notes and done some linking since, but one thing I wanted to note was the existing files only tab. If I toggle this on, I am not able to see the amount of empty notes I created through contextual learning. I was able to go through the course and create new links of empty notes, but if I toggle this on, I'm able to see them and see just how truly dense that subject really is. And by toggling it off, I don't get to crowd my PKM system with empty notes. I really like that feature. I love doing that. I came into this workshop in an inquiry of how to process my own ideas, organize my own notes, and also create content more fluidly. Because before this, I didn't really have a system and my system was just haphazard. I told Nick that I'd think about something and create something and it wasn't going as deeply as I'd like to be able to go. So one of the frameworks that we learned was about file structure and hierarchy, and this is how I've set mine up. My approach to file structuring might be against best practice of fluid frameworks because it may look a little rigid. There's only a few here and it's quite clean, but I like it. It brings me a lot of delight in seeing a place for everything and everything in its place. And I don't have to go through a mess of endless scrolling to find something and I can neatly tuck away things based on its status or category. I will tell you more about that in a minute. One thing I find interesting is that Emoji has its own ranking system and it's ranked higher than numerical ranking. So for instance, if I put numbers on these, they would go to the bottom of this folder hierarchy list. This produces some friction because I'd like to keep my journal up top but I don't want to sacrifice the aesthetics and put numbers on all the folders. So I'm hoping we can add drag and drop features to Obsidian um, so we can move our folder hierarchy the way we'd like in the future. We also learned about creating loose relationships with tags. I've never done tagging before outside of Instagram and I really like being able to see the tags here and visualize it on a graph. At this point, I get a few questions about the dark background, the emojis, the colors. I will tell you all more about that in a minute, but I want to talk about intention because one of the largest takeaways from the workshop was the intent behind creating a fluid and future-proof personal knowledge management system. That's a mouthful, but intention is very huge for me. I wanted something that was going to make sense to me and reflect my desires in how I conduct research and share it as well. And I wanted it to be fun and expressive and really interesting, but also easy to navigate through and easy to publish. So I had to write a thin line on the functionality for myself and the functionality for others. I've heard of other metaphors like second brain or digital garden, and I just stumbled across the brain forest as I was ideating one day. I have to say that since the release of Emoji 13.0 to Unicode in the fall, it made for this very illustrious and expressive way to build this PKM out with more fun. And it also colored the way that I'm going to name things in order to take a world-building approach within my own PKM. And you can see that on the left here. 
with the flow, the core, the rush, the code, the keys. The code I'm not so sure if I want there, but it's there for now. I will show you the rest. Nick explained the importance of visualizing your notes from a bird's eye view in something called a home note. And I call it the core within the brain forest. It's everything that energizes what this PKM is truly about. Within the light frameworks, I was able to build the way idea emergence happens with me. And I'm taking a four part approach I discovered in something I call the flow. In marketing and branding, everything to me is a process of consumption. And I wanted to show the way in which the brain forest was a catalyst for a healthier kind of consumption for me. I'm going to show you that just by toggling these out, making this a little bit larger so you can see. I use Obsidian in tandem with other apps, but I really wanted to understand what the system looked like from a bird's eye view. It follows the phases of ingesting, digesting, consumed, and egesting, which is content that probably technically fertilizes the brain forest or perhaps the internet. There are some interesting points in how I go about using this system. I don't know if I'll be able to get into it all right this second, but it's my approach to dissecting the frameworks and utilizing it in a way that works for me in somewhat of a world building approach that's practical and usable at the same time. I still have a lot of work left to do in terms of finding workflows um, for particular mediums, for instance, EPUBs or books, essays for videos and such. I have certain goals for the brain forest and I listed them out here with dates related within the rush. I use another project management app to make sure I hit these dates with since there's no reminder feature yet within Obsidian. The keys finally tell you exactly what every emoji is, and I split them up between my own thoughts versus the thoughts of others. This will be available for viewers who see the brain forest or view the brain forest through Obsidian Publish. I was really excited for the capabilities of Obsidian Publish. It's exciting that you get to share what's been in the deepest recesses in your mind online with others who value it. And that was my intention from the beginning. And so I had to consider the way someone would view and explore the brain forest on their own. And I tried to make it easier for the viewer to stay in one place by reducing as much clutter while still keeping some interesting uh, features of Obsidian on there. I didn't want viewers to see a wall of plain text, so I added some custom headers to keep things interesting. I'd like to sprinkle more in the future. I've got questions on whether I'm using a custom theme and I'm using my own theme that I customize. I basically downloaded Nick's Cybertron theme and then played around with the CSS, along with some help from the Obsidian forum and Reggie from Cohort One who made a great quick start guide. I've used one of my favorite fonts here, as you can see, uh, it's called Futura, that I use this on my site and other branded material, and I think it gives a cohesive feel as a digital asset, um, as well as a branded experience from me, which is something that I care about. It's important to me to release the brand for us with something in it, so I thought I'd do a fun project to help me get used to my own PKM and make it interesting along with my work, which is the analysis of the film Waking Life by Richard Linklater. It's one of my favorites. And the way I've split it up is with a write-up of my own analysis and then a breakdown of each of the scenes with a clip. Not each scene has a clip because you can't find that on YouTube, unfortunately, but they do have a script and they're followed with a scene interpretation and some final thoughts as well as some related links that lead back within the brain forest or elsewhere. Other projects that I am working on are more along the lines of brands, branding, and marketing, and the nature of our perception of reality, which I am kind of excited to go into. All of it has to do with connecting different themes back to what I know about brand experience and branding. For anyone who is interested in this, I'm really excited to release this at the end of January. One of my goals is to talk about this with at least quite a few different people, at least 50, who can share this with the right people who will enjoy it as it grows and develops and emerges. 
And I can do that with help um, because for anyone who wants to get in on the brain forest or get lost in it per se, they can go to my website and make a donation and shoot me an email and I'll reply with a link to this PKM. Thanks again, Nick, for creating a really fantastic workshop experience. I can't say enough great things about this workshop. It's been great to go through the material with a very enthusiastic teacher and a very warm and inviting community. Thank you for letting me share this with you. I hope to see whoever's watching this inside the Lighter Obsidian forums. And if you have a question or comment, you can message me on Twitter or Instagram. Either way, I'll get back to you. Have a good one. Peace. I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into Sana's mind. If you want to learn more about her work, make sure to check out the links below. Can you see how fun knowledge management can be? How joyful? Does it make you want to use a few emojis yourself? As always, there are a lot more of these inspiring tours I hope to showcase because they show how personal the process of thinking and growing ideas can be. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, and comment. And until next time, stay connected.